name's Grandad. Right, uh, this week we're going to get on with finishing all the batman inside. So we're going to start off in the bedroom area, um, do the ceiling first. Adi's just taking down the bits of insulation that we put up originally, the ribs. To take some... Ply that's running around here, so it needs to follow the shape of the bow on this. Bed. That's for the cable track. Yeah. So I just made this up so I can have a spare pair of hands. That's all. Right, so I can set that in the right place. And the way to get a joint where the two meet so otherwise it's that one will throw that one off and that one will throw that one off so just to fix this one in place hopefully not split the wood That's so scary, every time that's done. <laughs> I'm glad they saved my job. I can see this splitting. We'll see. to go through the wood and then to the steel without going through the roof. Is... But count, <laughs> count yeah. the sinking on just right there. And there you go, that's brilliant. First and the I've already sort of marked on there roughly where it wants to be. So hopefully I'll just slide into there. Bedroom's looking really battened out. <laughs> oh, yes. It's exciting, though. Can't nice. say we haven't got enough buttons. <laughs> <laughs> Can never have enough buttons. We might have to take some ballast out to compensate with buttons. Mm. Drilling, counter sinking, and then just working your way down the boat now. Because now I've got now I've got around this curve of the bow, it's just straight runs down. This was the odd bit. The yeah. bedroom was the odd bit. Yeah. It was all the shapes and where the wiring and the pipes are going. The 
should be quite easy until we get to the kitchen. The kitchen. Yeah, straightforward. He's thinking more about. Yeah. Here's my heart. Three beats a minute. We found that Gorilla Glue was the best adhesive to use for sticking the uh, wood to the steel work. This is trimming out the side hatch um, and we put three lines of adhesive on there the reason being behind it is we wanted to try and stop any moisture or anything getting behind or between the woodwork and the steel from the top and the bottom so that's the reason we went with these three lines we're putting on now the installation that you can see on the hatch doors is a temporary fix really it was just to keep us warm in the cold spell, that was all. Um, they're going to actually be removed later on and they'd like to be trimmed out and fitted with uh, some nice timber. The battens were flush fitted to the hatch frame and then once we'd pushed them onto the adhesive, we screwed them from either side.
this is the last window to be framed out and I've got to admit I'm pleased to see that they've all been done now I'm getting a bit fed up with it we're pleased the way that they've turned out because we know now that we can get a good fix in when we put the final wall finish on One thing we had to be wary of was the fact that uh, we didn't cover up the screw holes uh, for the clips for the windows. So I'm just making sure, as you can see here, that uh, I'm not cutting these marches too long so that the wood covers over the screw holes. The reason being for that is later on we're going to uh, have to remove the windows so that we can paint the exterior of the boat. Um, there is a window liner that's going to go around there which we're going to actually make removable as well so it'll just be a case of taking the liner out undoing the clips with the screws and then the window should come out from its uh, place so that then we can paint the boat and then refit the window and attach the window liner We've fixed the blue buttons onto the wall. Um, at certain places we've uh, added extra, just for purely and simply for whether there's going to be a TV or kitchen cabinets, or etc. going to be fitted on there. So there's a bit of extra strength in that bit of wall. I think that glass needs filling up, don't you? This is the final run of battening to go on the ceiling. Um, all the rest, well, the, all the rest is only four on ours. Well, there's two either side, two there, and then two in the centre. But these aren't too critical of where they go because we're going to put like um, ply over there to form the shape of the roof and then tongue and groove it. But this centre section is going to be where the cables run from the front to back. So it's um yeah it's designed so that the cables run down the center of the boat and if you follow me to here these are the air vents I call them mushroom vents but these are the air vents for the boat in the roof so we're going to run the cables down in a sort of cable tray this will be cut out obviously for the vent into the boat but the cables will run down the center but obviously they can't run over 
through underneath there so they're going to go either side so we're allowing that with this but we can't just put these anywhere because eventually there's going to be um, a boxing out on this so it makes a feature out of this cable tray that could be removed if ever we need to get in there um, we just foamed up the edges of these steel ribs at the moment so that there's no gaps when we put these on and we'll fill the rest in after but um, yeah that's where we're at so I'll just put this one so it's flush to the end of the hatch really so that when we do the finished joinery work on the hatch we've got something to attach into here we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out later stage anyway but yeah I'm just going to put some spray foam behind there so that when this pushes up it's there's something to protect the wood and it's not the, the cold spot on the steel just to walk to where the hatch is as you can see <laughs> but yeah I've drawn a little a few lines but this is the one I want to be going to I know it's just over 5.50 to the centre of that the same from there to here so that, that's the spot we need to be at. So these are just pilot, pilot holes into this rib. It's got to be there. wondering why we're countersinking this it's because the wood is 25 mil or one inch thick and that rib is 25 in or one inch thick so we've got 50 mil or two inches of, of thickness there but the screws we've been using to screw into the steel they can get them with 50s but with a hexagon head on but we wanted to use the sort of countersink head so we can only get those in a certain length so they're either too long or a little bit too short so we're using uh, a countersink in to get them into the steel and if we find the screw yeah same same as we did with the screwing the uh into the floor same idea just a screw with a cutting edge on there Solid as a rock. Quite square, scary drilling into the sea. Very. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, with a nice flat roof on your boat or before the bird scare us. <laughs> it's just a, not, a thin line between getting too much countersink in it and not enough. If you don't get enough countersink in it, the threads on these don't bite. Right, and quick. In. I'll do this one nearer to the end now so that you see but it's uh, basically the same as what we've been doing. There you 
go. And I'll just keep doing that all the way down the boat. What I've done here, because we wanted these to run obviously in line all the way down the boat, we, we, some of them you can just overlap and just fasten into there one and carry on and fasten into there and carry on with the next one. But because we need these to be one continuous line, the only way I've figured out of doing it is doing this, which we've done. If we go to the side on this one, that's the way that this one's going to look. We've just uh, notched them out the same. Well, either other than that, you've got to sort of fasten one into here and leave it length longer there. Fasten your next one into this one and leave it longer. So you've got two loose ends. Um, I know you could sort of try and stick it to this adhesive or whatever, but or you could stick a block on the side, I suppose, to support it. But uh, there's still a tendency for it to pull down. So we thought, well, the, we'll, we'll try this. It seems to be working so far. There's not much meat left in this wood to, to uh, hold on. But we'll see. 